Hi everybody, it's Linda here, and today I've got with me Maria Sakharova Fritz. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> good, good, very good. <laughs> I suppose so. Um, so Maria is from Philadelphia and uh, she's an aquatic specialist and has a PhD in um, education, exercise, and I think you specialised in chronic pain in the water. Is that correct? Have I got that right? Yes. I, I mean, my whole, whole forte was focusing on people with special population because that time was not chronic pain. So, and uh, as uh, I was working, my first work, I was born in, uh, born in, educated, raised in uh, Czechoslovakia. And uh, then I came to the United States and my first work, I was a young mom, I had two little children, so I, I need to work and whatever. So my work, first work in the United States was in YMCA. And the closest to my profession was uh, that time opening for aquatics. So I went and I volunteered and I was swimming teacher, swimming instructor, become swimming instructor, and then I said, oh, I can do this, I can do that. So truly, first time I was introduced to aqua fitness was at YMCA program. And we are talking about AD, 1986. Wow. And so, you know how that time the aquatic looked like. It started like first arthritis classes, the water was very cold. Um, Actually, after teaching hour and a half swimming, I had to go to shower and be froze <laughs> for a little bit. So, and uh, there become group of people who really didn't fit to arthritis class, but uh, they had a special needs. So I, they tell me, okay, you can teach the class with special population. But that was mixed people with lower back issue, with chronic pain, with Parkinson. So I kind of started to put them to the groups. And I designed the class for people with orthopedic problems, then with uh, neurological problems. So I call it bed break experience class. And I grow from it. And then from YMCA, then I kind of felt I checked myself what I can do and the kids got bigger. I started to work in preventive medicine center and uh, was very instrumental for developing the aquatic program with physical therapy because that time the person who was in uh, who, who for whom i was working was also dr ben scoder who was the physician for olympic team cycling olympic female team for the united states so she was very visionary very advanced uh, and uh, one day uh, the people came from they call it elvin institute what was i call it way how it was called then was institution for mentally and physically retarded and emotionally disturbed so these days it would be mentally emotionally and physically challenged yeah and uh, uh they just got and just uh, built big beautiful therapeutic pool so they asked me what will what it what we can do for you to work for us. And I said, because I was already in the train of thoughts of well-being, what was coming from the roots of my background, my education, because physical education in Eastern Europe was more methodology and didactic, didactics was create harmonize human. So there was a big aspect of, of physical, but also emotional part, sensory motor learning, since you know so people can work to full potential for athletics for the sport what was the huge propaganda you know for the countries so and uh, <clears throat> and uh, i was very thrilled so i was uh, because nobody had this position before me so i had a free free hand to create what was for me very important but at the same time i had to prove to myself to others what my work is and if somebody know when you are kind of entrepreneur or try some new waves people question you and on top of it i was from with my accent yeah. <laughs> and everything and nobody really had exercise physiologist you know there before 
So I was like, what she's all about? What is her job? So anyway, so for me, it was very good to create. So I had the wellness program for clientele, wellness what, uh, for employees and outreach that was for community. And because uh, this uh, Ellen Institute was a very, very kind of the pool was beautiful and it was like best kept secret of the lower county suddenly people started to come with special needs like in the pain and it was like cookie cutters they move same they and i said what it is and said, oh i have fibromyalgia i have fibromyalgia and i said what it is fibromyalgia and they are talking about very early very very early 90s yeah and uh, so what fibromyalgia means, the word is a combination, it's a word from Latin roots, as you know, and it's a combination of fibro, it's connective tissue, uh, the myo, myo, M-Y, it's muscle, all, A-L, is a pain, Gia, it's condition, so it's talking all about <laughs> the official that's your baby. <laughs> and syndrome is a group of symptoms that are together. And it is very young syndrome because that was officially recognized by American Medical Association in the United States in 87. And by who World Health Organization was recognized in 1993 as an official syndrome. So, and there mm -hmm. were no any diagnosis for it it was just are you in the pain and that is as you know pain is a very personal experience so how we will diagnose so i was with the trigger points in the four quarters like you know people know about it but it took and the way i was diagnosed was by ruling out symptoms so it took seven years to somebody really diagnosed with fibromyalgia so and uh, Nobody knows why it is happening, why. So way how I was analyzing the syndrome, uh, symptoms was a sleepliness, pain, sleepliness, soreness, uh, emotional issues, energetic issues like weakness. So it was in aspect all for emotional, spiritual, how I'm thinking and nurturing yourself, that's spiritual. Um, in the four was like a lot of deficiency on four quarters of our well-being and actually the first article what was published about that what i wrote was in aqua magazine and it was in 1999 and it was i remember like julie c asked me to write it because i had a presentation about it and um uh, aquatic international aquatic conference in san diego uh, no, yeah san diego was the year and she asked me if i can write article about it and it was can water help yeah. and because i had these ladies who were coming to my class it become from five to almost 18 they were very intelligent so i was also targeting whom it whom i had so it was usually nurses or very aware of what is happening in the world ladies so um, i said okay we can figure it out together so by ruling what is helping them and what is not helping them i i i kind of developed a new type of structure of the class when i was using a lot of the first part the regeneration the somatics how to move subconsciously and that was the grant for my doctoral thesis. And uh, my name of the doctoral thesis was the effect of water exercise and selected aspect of overall health on fibromyalgia population. And that was the, you know, they were, they were monitoring themselves yeah. because I had just 14. So I would say it was a good pilot study, but later it was followed by um, Dr. Colado in Spain, in Valencia, and he did big study on that with sleeping study and everything. So, can anybody get hold of your study? Is that, is that you know what? You know what? How it happened? It happened through um, Aquatic Exercise Association. I was a member of research committee, and 
they were coming from Spain, like Flavia, uh, Agassi, she was, uh, she was very active member of, of uh, research committee and from Brazil. And then it was also a combination of, when I went to go back, because I always, I had very good professor in my university. And uh, my professor, who was my group, prof, uh, group mentor, uh, Dr. Riela Labudova, she was uh, focusing and she developed the physical education for special path. And I kind of like was in touch with her and talked to her a lot. And once uh, when I was able to go back, uh, I said to her, well, I'm going back and I will like, tell you what I'm doing. I, I was like, it's in water and everything. And that was in 91. And who went with me to Slovakia was June Andrews. Right. I don't know if you remember her. She is uh, uh, like the pioneer of water fitness in the United States. And I said, June, would you like to go with me? And my professor, she set up lecturing for um, association of the teacher of his ed. So, and she was the first one who brought the curriculum of aquatic exercise on university level and uh, so she was very very helpful so I talked to her I said look what I'm doing and she said you know what this could be your doctoral thesis I said you know I'm here and you know it's there but we kind of work out together so I was able to go to her for a period of time and finish it my you know doctorate in education yeah excellent yeah. so yeah so I think that's that's that thing actually university level there is very little in yeah yeah that time i i'm uh, it was almost nothing about pain and uh, and i was i was uh, focusing because from my background as an educator i was trying to edu educate the people how you can live your life functionally in your own comfort zone and how to stay in that comfort zone and how to know yourself. So there was a combination of a lot of aspects and that was pushing me to this other sciences. So I become like multidisciplinary. And I was very lucky when later on, I from the preventive medicine center, I went and focused in chronic pain management, but I needed water. So I was working in two facilities where I had the aqua uh, pool and uh, uh, I also was starting to do it with bringing the body to a relaxed but active stage of awareness. And I did it through progressive muscular relaxation. That was on the land first. Yeah. And as I was doing that class, I had one gentleman and he snapped immediately to the deep relaxation, like he, he, he was hypnotized. <laughs> and he said, well, I am opening center and with your skills, you will be perfect for that. And it, the center was a center for healing and change. And it was mostly psychotherapy. And uh, in that time, I was experimenting with passive stretches because when I was working pain management, I was monitoring, also asking people questions, how do you feel today? And I knew they were not physically active, but it's, oh, I'm so tired. I so feel uncomfortable. And then I realized, okay, it was a stress. It was a mental stress or emotional stress. And I started to go and study and researching like if there was something done before. So that's how I crossed the Hans Seili, who was a biochemist and also MD. And uh, in, uh, I think he died in 1986, something like that. And he was, um, he was doing blood work for the for his patients and he realized when you are in extreme emotions you start to have this fight and flight so if it's positive or negative you are under stress it's just your perception how you are you know how you are aware uh, how you are taking that so and that's based on your belief system you know how we were raised like for me always my parents said, what you can do today don't leave it for tomorrow you just finish it in the day and I was like Telling apart, <laughs> but I have to finish today, <laughs> you know. So now I know I will read tomorrow. 
so it's the inner inner pressure and a lot of people you know have this so it's coming in this stage it's coming like and when i was working with the, with this population i noticed how they almost like erased themselves like they were giving to others but not to themselves so one of the exercises was you tell me what you did to yourself how many minutes did you give to yourself just for yourself and usually it was associated with the guilt yeah oh, if i rest they think i'm lazy or i don't deserve to rest so it was really very recognizing themselves and also what was very important i noticed this healing process is much better in the group of ladies because female create the bond when they're in the you know as a as a group we are dealing with chronic pain much better than the men also the statistics show it's more spread with female i don't think so i think also male has it but they are proudly admitted you know the fibromyalgia the, the syndromes symptoms yeah. <laughs> uh, gentlemen yeah. yeah yeah ashley when i was doing the athletic uh, uh, active aging uh, athletes male the symptom of burned out burned out and yeah. overtraining is very similar to fibromyalgia so the no pain and no gain belief system it push you to fibromyalgia yeah, yeah. as you know yeah. I can imagine oh so very interesting. And what have you got planned now, though? Have you got anything up your sleeve that you're sort of planning to study, to write? What oh, so as you know, I wrote for Aqua magazine a lot. So I think it is around 40 articles in my old period. Yeah. Um, yes, I, I, I like to work with fitness learning system, with aquatic therapy institute with the man faculty and that's extremely creative group of uh, professionals and uh, when you are in the environment it's like you are just so motivated and so inspi inspired by others and it's just you know meeting the minds <laughs> you know group and um, Ashley Rutsova who is the visionary and finder of Atri she was the first one first book what i find where there was the research about aquatics you know remember the first book yeah so she's really the groundbreaker in this yeah yeah i had a chat with uh, Ruth last week or just over a week ago yeah yeah. Uh, yeah so that's actually yeah it's very interesting to hear her story yeah so what i like to do is i for me always was very important to create a setting when i can i mean create for me the setting for environment that i can create so and and go my own way so i'm not really the type of person who is good for layering and the corporate thing i am like my free spirited entrepreneur <laughs> so at ymc it was very good because i never asked for my ask, can i do this can i do this so i had opportunities that shift me to other direction and then i had very good work in the elvin institute but um, my kids were growing and the time was from eight to from 11 at eight to eight so i was really so i have to make choice so i started to work in the in the, the pain management and uh, because my approach was very holistic but was not really coming with the philosophy of that place uh i said okay i think i have to be my own boss so i started my own and uh, if you are a self provider um and you don't have any product to sell or anything like that you just it's like really tough because you have to cover yourself with all securities and benefits so i start to i incorporate myself with the health black sports club what was a part of the hospital so i was working in kind of medical setting and that was great because i had a lot of referrals from the doctors yeah and yeah. and i would even advise everybody if you are working in this business 
you need to really create your own network of professional like psychologists, um, physiatrists, orthopaths, um, nutritionists, and go and physical therapists and refer them people, refer them your clients because I'm in health fitness and not in healthcare. And, and uh, check also with personality if they will fit. And I have so much referrals from this professional back to me and I refer to them and we work as a team and we embrace our professions. Like not competing, but embracing. I think that's, that's what I need. And if you can get that, get in with the doctors and the physicians. Yeah. And I would, I would say right now, the type of my clientele is a huge combination with mental health, because the first, the first stage of, first stage of the stress is, the phase one is alarm stage, that everybody got an anxiety, and uh, you know, it's breathing so calm them down. But if that's not happening, then it's resistance stage, and that's with uh, the hormones adrenal, you know, it's rushing. Then it's this fight and flight. Yeah. But that's, that's, that will be, and I would say that fibromyalgia could be the third stage when you are in exhaustion stage. When it's the body, it's so taxed by these hormones, then it doesn't work anymore, you know. Yeah. And yeah. that's when we have to know how to get everything together. And the water is ideal environment for it because the research is proven when you are in the warm water, therapeutic warm water, uh, and you do low impact aerobic movement, like connecting with the breathing, your brain weight drop to alpha. So it's enhancing the healing. And then you start to respond to it. You are releasing muscular tension on emotional level, what is a deep tension. And that's what is holding the muscle tight. It's your emotion. Because even though when I have somebody on the table in the stage or in the water in the stage of relax but aware of like you know we are in that position like you know the phone is ringing but you don't feel like to get up and pick the phone so that's the stage <laughs> um, you are you are uh, started to later and move and you start to move somatically and losing and, and the thoughts are going through your mind like movie it's going faster, slower, sometimes it comes to the same thought and just let it go, let it flow. And after everything, what I'm noticing, you know, and reporting with my clients is this aha moments. Hmm, how I didn't think about it before, because you are getting off that tunnel, you know, condition. Yeah, yeah. Well, we go into protective mode, don't we? And I think that's when everything Yeah. Is. Yeah. And that's what you, you can't sort of see out of the environment or out of the situation you're in. But yeah, I think when you're in the water, it's a bit like having a, a hug, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you might, um, so like some of the people are in pain, if you sort of try and give them a hug, they say, oh, don't touch it. Yeah. yeah. They can get that. Yeah. Now, the way how I relate to it, it's like, because when I had this class, I was giving them a lot of mental imagery with, with sensing themselves. Yeah. And it was yeah. like, you, I love noodles and uh, the device because it helps you. It's almost like invisible, but it's free to move. And uh, I visualize you are in the bubble, you are in the womb, you are safe and protected, nothing can happen to you. And I remember in the beginning, people are very self-conscious. Oh my goodness, I look like it's a funny thing, but they are doing. And then they got into it and they don't care. They feel they're just only them and water. I said, it's nobody, it's just you and the water. And then they're in the bubble. And I said, and now we pretend you are going to break the bubble. We are like chicken going out of the egg. And you go to the unknown and then you go back to the safety. So they start to move like, I said, now we are like octopus. <laughs> they yeah. move and suddenly they start to move freely and that's the soma. And if you see every people are moving like there is something wrong, everybody has to move different. I mean, has different precondition, so they move differently. And then when they are ready for the next level, 
from a movement coming to the exercise, then it's corrected exercise. They have to feel the connection between body and mind is basically biofeedback. You feel what you... So it's like they have to feel one side is tighter, one side is freer. So it's nothing like, you know? And I think there's nowhere like the water doing that. Yeah. You know, like you can so sense when you're completely in yeah. the pool, you're um, walking or if, when you go into... So, and neurologically, when this is happening, it's happening because the movement become aware of, because they feel, they are sensitized, because in the water the hydraulic pressure is pressing deeper, so they feel better. The movement is slowed down, so you have this window of movement, like slow motion, so you got more aware of your... That's when you started to reprogramming your movement, from your habitual movement. You are, on oh, this is... And how soon... the the body recognizes it, the, the, the body recognizes the sensation, you reprogram yourself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, just doing a normal aqua exercise class is not the uh, routine. Yeah, yeah. Cheap, you know, we, it's like, I'm always saying to people, if you know the shortcut to get to your friend's house, you're always going to get the shortcut, you're never going to go the wrong way around. Yeah, yeah is exactly the same so, and that's what i'm saying i was like tracking back from the results what is happening and yeah. that opened like such a field of unknown and what you are focusing on fascia and and all this that's like like totally like a new world so yeah. and, uh, it's been there a long time ignored for a long time but uh, yes yes the anatomy because it's still the baby it's still the new kid so, <laughs> yeah, we've got a long way to go. Yeah, very, very interesting. When I, when yeah. I was in the fashion, just, that was my life. Yes, 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 yes. I remember. <laughs> I remember your beginnings. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, all right, just changing the subject slightly. What, um, I mean, I, I assume really that you actually have, love teaching everything that's involved in teaching in the fall. What, what I am very, go ahead, but I am very, very happy and very heartwarming. It's how the industry is going, how the industry is recognizing the first rehabilitation part. And this is Igor Bodenko, who basically put to category the progression of the protocol of, of the exercise. So first is rehabilitation phase, that means bring everything back to the function. And you can be tap athlete. There is no way there is a human being who has everything functional, <laughs> you know? The second one is conditioning, and third one is performance. And I notice in the health clubs and everywhere, people push on conditioning and then perform. But they don't have a base, neurological base, because the first one is always neuromuscular, like have to be built by awareness, balance, coordination, flexibility, agility, and speed. But the speed have to be added when this basic three, basic four are accomplished. Yeah. Activity for speed straight away you know it's like people that would say when i've been uh rehabilitating somebody and i'll say oh you know i decided that i was going to go and i only did sort of 10 20 minutes and i said from what from nothing and i said well yes exactly 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 yeah, yeah. because they thought they had a workout just when they're sweating and huffing and puffing that's not the case it has to be worked out here first in the brain to reconnect your body. Yeah. yeah too many, too yeah. many people sit there and think, oh, you know, I can just go and start doing something. And it's even the same if you went to the garden or the garden or the workout, but you get yeah. there and people come and they, they have an injury and you say, but you haven't done any of that for six yeah. hours. So all of a sudden you're going into the garden and doing six hours of weeding. Yeah. That's, I, I wrote about this on this topic, the article, the last one article what I wrote for Aqua Magazine was uh, regress to progression. 
yeah. reg regress to progress. Like you have to break it down their movement to the basic and retort them. And yeah. how you retort yeah. somebody unless they don't feel how it's correct and how it's without pain. And that's in the water. I cannot even imagine other environment than water to do this very efficiently. Yeah. Oh, I just hope we can get back into that water very soon. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much, so much to do. And and like now it's going to be atri symposium. It's yeah. so rich. Yeah. It's so rich for the topics. Kanijani scan. Perry Mitchell. R Ruts Rutsova, uh, Dana Levin, you, everybody is like in their own angle, their own gift, embracing and putting all together. It's so motivational. Yeah. yeah. And it's very Beth good. Scalon, Beth Scalon, she's putting all this thing to physical therapy. She is really entrepreneur in physical therapy's like movement. Yeah. Um, so much to learn from her. But that's and everybody whom I didn't mention, <laughs> like how, how, yeah. It's going to be a, a good few days and I've spoken about it over the last few chats as well. So mm -hmm. symposiums on the 23rd to the 26th of June. Yeah. Lots of amazing people from across the world teaching. You, uh, I'm co-presenting with Dana, Dana Levin. She is, um, she is, and I'm so blessed to be put with her, I mean with everybody, but with her will be so unique because she is very, coming from the end of yoga and, and alternative healing and energy healing. And Ashley, when you do progress muscular relaxation, it's all, all energy as well, because energy never disappears, it's just changing the form. And you are focusing on your body in certain geometry. So you can refer to sacred geometry. <laughs> so we are really like connecting. I will be like more broad. She is focusing on, on other evoking gifts that people have. It's going to be, going to be exciting. It's very exciting, very different. And we can reach different people as well by being... Yeah. Really I mean, everybody to me, everybody's original and everybody, when I when I work with a client and I look at the client, I'm just letting them talk and watch how they move and how they talk and what is important and what is not important. Then, so I kind of go to their psychology and their value system. And then I try to see the sociology of their, like the relationship in the family, the position in the family. You will be surprised how the healing process is stopped with dysfunctional family connection by overprotecting or disabling that with too much help or with too little help. And everybody needs different. Somebody needs to be nurtured in order to get better. Somebody needs to be more pushed and be independent, you know. So, so it's, yeah, very, very interesting, very sort of thought-provoking topics, really. Yeah. So, so when you're in the pool with your clients, do you use any, um, any equipment or is it just like... I do. I use equipment and, and that's, I, am, I would say they are our, our toys. <laughs> we play with them. But it's, it's every session with the client is different based how they feel the day. Because I can plan something and they would say, oh, I do have a problem. You know, let's say to fix it. You cannot work with something what is dysfunctional, yeah? So, and always I use equipment that will help me with embracing assistance, water assistance, water buoyancy, uh, all benefits, uh, resistance, and for example, if I have somebody with stress fracture, so what you need? You need to have the person as passive as much they could be, but use the resistance of the water. So I use a lot of uh, floating devices. So I end up with the vest, you know, so the person is buoyant and can float. And if I need even more, then I will put a noodle or any kind of floating device what I have around. And I'm doing that because if you start to something, I, I 
a little bit resistance to invest to a lot of equipment and then it's not used, but use something, you buy one and use it to full potential. And then add something new and add something new, add something new, what is functional for you. It's nothing worse when I see places, but they have uh, all equipment and they don't know how to use it properly or it's not used or it's used for one exercise. Yeah. You know? Fascinating. Very fascinating. I mean, the, the, the pool I work is um, attached to a hospital. It's not part of the hospital. It is independent, but it is attached. So but just by closeness of proximity and association, the two are... <laughs> So now the Helplex Sports Club donate the hospital, what we were for, donated this our sports club to the YMCA. So Ashley, uh, and exactly the YMCA what I start work with, yeah. I am associated with it now. <laughs> so community YMCA, Eastern Delaware County. And uh, uh, we have this beautiful therapeutic pool there and uh, very good supportive staff because the why the aquatic is huge so we have a lot of lifeguards and uh, you know very safe environment otherwise and uh, when we need floating there is like the floating calf neck noodle or anything what support the neck anything what made the person safe feel safe and comfortable and I, I assist at the beginning and I, I do the modalities with them, but later on they have to do it on their own and find their own way. So I'm trying to create independency, not dependency, because I'm in the field, okay, you have to live functional life. I don't work with acute, like physical therapy. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. No. So I work with, this is life. <laughs> and then they can regress because there is a chronic pain cycle. So if they regress, you go back to the physical therapy and then come back to me. And actually, I have very good PR with my group of physical therapists, and they're really good. And we are learning from each other. That's lovely. Because I can experiment more than that protocol. So yeah. it's probably, I, it's nothing better when I see they're using certain exercises what I do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, slightly different over here, of course, because we have got the NHS. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. NHS. It's relationship is different yeah um, they can't sort of directly yeah they just tend to say i mean some of the consultants in the hospital say oh there's a, a person in the pool i know that's really good you need to go and mm -hmm. so that's how i get but in amongst the public i mean do you have the public in the pool when you're working or do you have the pool just to yourself well because uh, because um, everybody have to make money you know like the pool it's not easy and cheap to have it so we are when I do one-on-one -on -one, usually it's with I put to the hours that nobody's in the pool so basically my day started before this COVID yeah I started at 5 30 at morning and until 8 because I have a 30 minute session with my clients, I end up the pool segment around 12, uh, around 8 o'clock. And then I moved to the gym. And I had like big plant table or I had very functional exercises. It was a very nice, uh, you know, group. And then when there was less people in the pool, like around, like after my lunch time, I went back to the pool with some clientele. So I, now when I had this break, I said, oh my goodness, how I was able to make these hours because I had like 14 clients a day. And you know how it is. It's like boom, 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 boom. And you have to yeah. totally yeah. focus on, but yeah. always embrace the ability. There's a disability. Yeah. So, um, so generally you're sort of like, you're just one-to-one -one with your client, but sometimes there's a few people in it's not. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was mixed. Like for example, when I had a class, the the class, uh, the swimming lessons were able to allow in the part of the pool. So sometimes I had a pool and for me, but it's open to anybody. But it was good because people are watching what you are doing and they try to, you know, see what you do. <laughs> so then they try to do it themselves. So it's like 
now after 23 years working in that facility, I can see there is more love for water exercise and water running and water walking and than swimming. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes. Uh, you know, when we have the group, we just hold ourselves. So, yeah. so that just leads into another nice question. One to one or group exercise, which is your favorite? Depends. Depends. When I really focus and wanted to help that person, you need personal attention one on one. But after a period of time, I like to be the person part of the group because that's their lifestyle. And if they need one-on-one, -on -one, okay, have a session with me, but go and maintain in the class. So I like to do combination. Yeah. And, and, and then it's like maintenance. The class is like lifestyle. It's a maintenance. Yeah, I agree. It's, I, like, I, like to, I like to do anything. I, I, I love to have interaction. So there is no favorites. It's what is needed. The yeah, same answer that I gave, the right thing for the right person, one to one yeah. needed or group exercises that needed as well. Yeah, That's, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely fabulous. So, um, hmm, where should we go now? So, have you always worked in the water? Did you have a previous career? No, this was my first. I mean, when I graduated uh, and I was in Czechoslovakia, I was uh, one year teaching PZ and geography. That right. was my major. And then we did come to United States and I got two children. I mean, now Jakub is 36 and Mimi is 35. I have two grandchildren. <laughs> so, and... Um, so I kind of like my life that I'm here, but here in the United States. And I feel very blessed because um, the Eastern Europe uh, exercise science was very evolved because the government was putting a lot of money for research and everything there. So I had the knowledge, but the, the technicality and uh, everything was here. So I got the best from the board world. And yeah. definitely the clientele, it's people in the United States, I mean, like where I am, it's much open to this than there. Yeah. I, I kind of feel. Yeah, it's, it's more open over there than it is to over in the UK as well. There's opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do get very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, now, uh, now, you know how the trend is coming. It's going to like more of uh, have apps on your phone and follow the apps, you know, with exercising. One way is good because it's uh, forcing, they are giving you opportunity to be active. But at the same time, there is not really downplay of recover, recovery, regeneration. So actually will create more work for us, <laughs> you know, to do that. Yeah, why worry uh, worry me a little bit because obviously you need an instructor to make correction to get those neurological patterns reversed. Yes, 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 yes. So with that, with the app, again, if it gets people to be able to move that weren't moving, uh, then it's, there's a good thing for it as well, a good place for it. In the world. And also, also the medical community, it's very much aware of the benefits of other exercise and that's yeah. the fruit of the educational agency like ATRI and the Aquatic Exercise Association, you know, the major one, and it become really very mainstream mm -hmm. with the aquatics. Well, it's given me a good life, I wouldn't have claimed it for anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> the bad so, thing is that my first incarnation was as a chef. And I thought, twice up until I did my master's, I kept thinking, well, this is only what I'm doing whilst the children grow up. And then I sort of like thought, what am I talking about? I've been doing this for a lot longer than I was a chef. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm not a <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a strange journey. But still connected because the nutrition, the cooking, the gourmet thing, it's very important with your like all these intermediate dieting right now and the bright food, 
that's very connected with the inflammations and you know everything. So there's a tie together. So, so why I why you asked me why I create why I wanted to do this? It was uh, I I as mentioned before to you. It was we were like from medical family, as I said in my immediate family, it's 14 doctors, and my sister she was orthopath, my father was a doctor, and uh, so always was the certain nurturing and awareness of uh, well-being the others of the health and well-being the others, and even my thesis, uh, master thesis was based on my sister, you know, consultation with my sister. So I was started to use medical, medical uh, testing for finding the range of motion of column of different athletes. That was my master thesis. And that was something new when I was trying to combine the medicine in the time. And we are talking 85, uh, 70, 80. <laughs> I don't I don't even remember when I graduated the school anymore. In 1980 I graduated. <laughs> and my doctorate was in 2007 after being here and doing this. Well, of course that that journey yeah. 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 And I went there back because of the philosophy and thinking about the physical physical education needs and how it's really I would say very important very important i would say science for human development for sensory motor learning and program what i did here with the children who were not having really proper physical they were they were unprivileged children they were 10 years old and didn't know how to jump the rope they were just moving from one place to other they were not exercising and how soon they were able to do for example forward roll their self-esteem and self-confidence raised up so and that they did much better in the school and then i give them homeworks what have to be like signed with the parents but they, they have to do the homeworks with the parents so that means you do 10 sit-ups every night <laughs> the parents have to sign but the parents have to do it with them yeah. so actually i had a teacher the uh, a meeting with the parents when i had like both parents coming to the meeting what was unheard of and I, because that was community when the kid had not that much attention from the parents. So they did come and I thank them for allowing me to work with their children and supporting them in this cause. And I got movement there, <laughs> you know, with the parents. It was very good. Yeah, that's brilliant. Brilliant. Excellent. Yeah. Good way of doing yeah. uh, So I think. I've got one more question, and that's if you can be remembered for anything, if you ever retire. <laughs> I don't think so, we ever retire. We always will do what we do, because that's part of us. <laughs> we will maybe limit the time, but... So, what would you hope to be remembered for? What would you, what would you like to think you'd given? Would I, like to be, would I like to be remembered? I don't know if I like, I mean, remember the way, like if somebody will think of me, can say, okay, I got inspired by her, or, oh, it was something what the person learned during my classes and help them to, and the skill help them to go through the life hurdles. Like for example, in my fibromyalgia class, I had a lady who just loved to be in that bubble. And she said, this is my space and I don't know anything. And later on, she had the cancer. And she told me where she was, she just always went in the back to her bubble and she visualized she's floating in that pool. So that's how I wanted to be remembered. Yeah. They don't have to, they don't have to say, remembered by the skill of what they learn and what helped them to go through the life. Very nice. If I can inspire other professionals, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, uh, especially all of us that are involved with AEA and with HRI, it's, it's sort of one of our big passions is to be able to. Yeah. Well, when yeah. I said, 
influence the other professional it's like inspire way like hmm this is a good idea why i will not try that so bring from the others the best what they can offer absolutely yeah and bring them forward so that they can help more because that's really what we're all all about is yeah other people and helping people in whatever whether it's psychologically or physically yeah, yeah. emotional or physical it's still and, and i truly feel like we are like this mosaic Mm -hmm. uh, when there is one profession and have to be just right connection with the other profession so the person has like beautiful carpet of what I can do and when I need to come and you know yes. feel connected not disconnected absolutely. absolutely okay is there anything else that you think you'd like to add Maria I think we've covered quite a few topics but, uh, <laughs> lots of really really good it's always very very good so well, well i i just uh, i just am blessed and happy i am among people who are among colleagues who i am like and connecting with everybody and uh reforcing back and there is sharing and giving and receiving so i like to thank you to talk to me <laughs> and uh, I am so proud of your accomplishments and Haley's accomplishments and all this platform that you are creating I think it's so important for other people to hear and ability of other people to share yeah I think so and I, th I, th and I think um, gives people an idea of things that you can do and where you can go with the career as well that it's not just um, especially, especially, I would say the young professionals who, you know, with these uh, apps on Facebook or whatever, they just hang something. They have to kind of go a little bit to the past and see what already something was done. You know, also like learn from the past. You know, the present and the future. Yeah. Embrace what's done before. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Maria. Well, thank you very, very much. Oh, you're, been... you're welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, see and you. I will see you on uh, Zoom for you next week. <laughs> no, next week, the following week. Yes. Yeah. Okay.